Stop wasting your log footage. You heard it right. This video is about a very, very important tip and I think this is a game changer. If you understand this properly, you never will be wasting your log footage and you're gonna take full advantage of the high dynamic range that you shoot in your log footage. Whether it be log or whether it be raw, uh, you know, you need to take full advantage of the high dynamic range that you've captured. Now, what does high dynamic range mean? High dynamic range means that you can retain more of the highlights and more of the shadows in the same shot. To understand what we are doing wrong, we need to know about three of the key factors in color grading. So the first one is what is the color space of your camera? Then what is the color space of your timeline? And then what is the color space of the output? In most cases, the output color space that we're going to be using is going to be Rec. 709, which is a standard across the world uh, right now because most of the television screens, most of the laptops, mobile phone screens and all the platforms around have the capability to preview colors in Rec. 709 color space. The footage that you're shooting is log footage. Normally, the log footage has a dynamic range of 10 to 15 stops. The higher the number, the higher the dynamic range. Then you have the output color space. Now, output color space as it is Rec. 709. So in most cases, Rec. 709 has around six stops of dynamic range. Now, you need to be taking the full benefit of your 15 stops of dynamic range while you're editing. But if you keep your timeline color space to Rec. 709, then you're actually destroying your footage. You're not actually using the full potential of your footage because it is creating a bottleneck situation. You have 15 stops of dynamic range and you're working in a very confined six stops of dynamic range environment. Right, that's the main problem. There are several different ways to do this, but to get more control on your footage and to see everything right in front of your eyes, we're going to explore a very easy to use method and a method that can really help you achieve high quality exposure. And when you set the exposure through that method, your footage is most likely gonna look more like films. So let's jump into Resolve and let me show you that method. Now, this is a footage shot on Red One Mysterio Max on anamorphic lenses. And uh, this was shot during one of my cinematography classes with students. So we're going to use this as an example. And even if you have, uh, you know, Sony S-Log3 or Canon Log footage, it's going to be the same thing. Let's go to color page. Now, let me quickly show you what are the raw settings of this. So in the raw settings of this clip, the color space is red color 2 and the camera curve is red log film. Uh, in your case, if you don't have a raw footage, it would be, you know, let's say if it is Sony, so it's going to be Sony uh, and S-Log3. Now let's have a look at our color space settings. So if I go to the settings and I go to color management, you can see that my color science is DaVinci YRGB. It's not ACES or anything else or not color managed. It's just DaVinci YRGB. And the timeline color space is Rec. 709A. We're not going to change the timeline color space over here to make it bigger to account for the higher dynamic range. Instead, we're going to use the manual method of color space transform uh, through which we can get more control of the footage. So uh, one other thing is that in the timeline color space has been set to Rec. 709A. In my case, it could be, uh, you know, because I'm working on a Mac display so that I need to keep it consistent the output consistent on all devices. That's why it's kept at Rec. 709A. Uh, in your case or in the default settings, it could be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 or it could be Rec. 709 Scene. Both of them are going to be giving you uh, equivalent results. So with this done, after watching this, our output color space is also same as timeline, right? So let's just press save or cancel and then let's go and add in the color space transform so that we can convert this footage into proper Rec. 709 or SDR. Now what we're going to do is that I'm going to add in the color space transform, the method I used to do in the beginning and which didn't give me good results. So let's do it that way first. I'm just going to leave a node before so that we can work on exposure on that one and then press option S and add in a new node. Let's add in color space transform on this one. Let me just also label it so that it's easy for us to understand, CST. After adding the color space transform, we're going to put in the corresponding input color spaces of the camera and input gamma. So this one is going to be something that is coming from the camera. In our case, uh, you know, we have set it to red color two and input gamma is red log fill. All right, 
The output color space could be now set to Rec 709 exact. And then output color, output gamma could be gamma 2.4, just to be really precise. Now this is the method that is actually gonna create the bottleneck situation because in this method, you're basically bringing in your 15 or 16 stops of dynamic range footage and you're throwing it into a timeline that is basically just a Rec 709 timeline and basically it has only six stops of dynamic range. So that means it is going to limit you when you adjust the exposure. Let me show you the way, what is the way forward, how to basically get the high amount of dynamic range in there. So let's go to the you know clips. I have another similar shot after this one. We're basically going to convert this high dynamic range footage uh, from red into DaVinci white gamut, which is a much larger color space, which has around you know 20 stops of dynamic range. So we're just going to convert the whole timeline into DaVinci white gamut, and then we're going to work in DaVinci white gamut, and then at the end, we're just going to convert it back to from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec 709. So let me just show you how to do it. So we're just going to add in the color space transform. Again, input color space, red color two. Input gamma is red log fill, red log fill. And output color space, we're just going to set it to DaVinci White Gamut. The output gamma can be set to, uh, you know, something similar DaVinci Intermediate, we're just going to look for DaVinci Intermediate and that's what we're doing. So this is a manual way of doing that same thing rather than changing it into the timeline, we're just doing it over here. Now let's add in another node and another one. So this is going to be our CST1 and probably this one at the end is going to be CST2 and this one we're just going to leave for the exposure. In the CST2 let's add in the color space transform again and now you, we know that the input color space is basically DaVinci White Gamut and the input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. And now the output color space, again, similar to what we we're doing in the previous project, Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. That's it. Now, if we take a look at the shot before this, you can see both of them are exactly similar. There's no difference. At this specific point, there's no difference in them. Uh, you know, this method and this method, they're just looking similar. But, you know, let's just do a little work on exposure and let me explain you where the difference would come in, actually. So let's go to the one we have two CSTs in. Now, what is happening basically in simple words is that this is converting the red footage into uh, DaVinci white gamut and then we have a bigger space to work on exposure and then it is being converted back to Rec 709. Now over here we're just going to label this as exposure and let's just pull the exposure up a little bit so that we can just like uh, you know make it look a little better and let's increase the gain and I would also like to bring the lift down right so we're trying to push in the limit so that, you know, we could just get a little bit of a better, uh, you know, understanding. You know, it already looks good, a little pushed. Uh, if we see the before and after of this exposure node, we have definitely added in more contrast into the footage and, you know, it looks more punchy. Let's just uh, grab a still out of it. Grab still. Now what we're going to do is that I'm just going to paste the same exposure node on the one uh, clip before, you know, command C, let's go to that clip. All right, I'm just going to paste it. That same exposure node, command V, nothing changed, but you can see a big difference between these two. You know, this one with two CSTs is much more balanced. The light looks much more, uh, you know, the exposure looks uh, much better. And this one seems a little blown out and the colors even don't look that good. So this one with the two CSTs where we converted it into DaVinci White Gamut and this one with working in Rec 709 color space. Look at the way it is, uh, you know, overexposing the skin, the way it is not giving you proper, correct, dense colors. And this one, on the other hand, is giving you much better colors. So let's also have a like split view to see what it looks like. Have a look at this. Have a look at how it is retaining the detail in the skin. 
So this, my friend, is the difference that you can create if you have S-Log footage, don't waste it. I tried to make it as simple and as easy as possible for you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, drop a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel so that I could keep producing more videos like this.